All right, fellas, good morning. You all know Wesley Nash, he came up with some questions asking us to help him out with graduate school and how those decisions are made. And I wanted to start out with asking, uh, how, how do we decide what type of degree we should be pursuing at the next level? And that leads us to choosing the school, what schools offer the most for us. Like, how, how, do we, how do we get to that? Neil, how did, how did you arrive to that point? Um, you need to understand whatever school you're going to, what professors and what faculty and staff work there and what existing research um, and efforts are already being made there. You came in with a bachelor's and a master's degree. Uh, do they relate to your <coughs> PhD work? Yeah, they all build off of each other. But looking at the question, I don't think they necessarily have to build off of each other or relate exactly. Um, my biggest thing is just to talk to the faculty at that school and get advice. For me, I've had to make an interesting twist in, in making it still apply because business management is still understanding how to deal with people, understanding culture. So I also think it kind of gives me an advantage in my perspective because I'm coming from a different background. I remember going into graduate school and realizing that discipline was huge, that coming into graduate school there were certain expectations on me <clears throat> that, oh, and I'm a history, I'm a history major, was just, you should have read these 20 books before starting. And I think when people, when I walked into the classroom and there were a lot of people who had already read a lot of books I hadn't read, I did feel as if they were smarter than me. And it pushed me. And I think one of the things that Nash has asked us is, like, what's that driving force? What made you want to stay committed to it? And it was just almost a level of competition. It's all about <clears throat> passion. At the end of the day, what do you want to do and how are you going to get there? Um, and it started for me just with a want to work with African-American male student athletes. And that's really why I went to get my master's. And that's you know why I'm here today, because I want to work with those student athletes and I want to change their reality of success and their reality of academic mm -hmm. success. So I mean, it, it all started with passion and the transition from undergrad to grad made it easier because I had that passion in mind. The so as you're a professional, you're already, you hit the level all of us are trying to get at. You have a master's degree. Why stop there? Like what, what, was, what was it for you just, you know what, I got the master's, I'm good. For me, I think it's important to think about, you know, where you want to go. You know, uh, with the master's degree, you know, I the ceiling is so, the sky is only so high. You know, and I want to be the person who's, who's not following somebody around. I want to be the one who other people are following. And I know in order for me to do that, you know, I have to pursue a doctor. What's the, what's the difference between the master's and the PhD? Because we know that most people don't have a PhD in business. They just stick with the MBA, journalism, they just have a master's. Typically, communications, unless you want to teach, you stick with a master's degree. One thing that I've realized is that it's hard to establish credibility, especially when you're working with senior <coughs> level administrators. Um, also, faculty members, you know, they may not take you serious, or as serious as you'd like them to take you if you don't have that doctorate. You know, so there's a certain level of respect and mutual understanding that comes with it. So I, I think recognizing your industry is, you know, is a big part of it. You know, from what has been told with me, you know, one of the biggest differences between masters and PhD is, you know, while you're, you're in your master's program, you're trying to find a dissertation focus. Whatever I, you know, I've read my dissertation on, in some way, shape, or form, this is a part of my life mission. That's what's been told to me. What I'm hearing here is that even the higher the degree, our marketability expands even further. We're not just isolated. Although our research may be isolated, mm -hmm. our potential for work it, is not. But I'm gonna take a step back because coming in, I didn't really have that expectation um, that I would have uh, a necessarily a bigger platform or I would make more money. Um, I felt like I would be fine with a master's degree and I could do a lot of different things. But really what drove me to come back to school is that uh, just the opportunity to learn for life. Everybody in my family valued education, but a lot of people didn't have the opportunity that I had. So if the opportunity presented itself for me to get a PhD, for me to get my PhD funded, it's like you're almost spitting on the people behind you to not take that opportunity. So I got a, uh, like a semester left and I'm interested in grad school. I just haven't found a good program yet, or one that pertains to what I want to do. How, uh, what's keeping me from actually applying is the whole idea of you know, is my GPA up to par with the competition and is my resume up to par? So how difficult is it to get into a good program? The one thing that I have found is that there is no true rubric 
getting into a good program. There are people who do really well on the GRE standardized test and they get in and they have low GPAs. Then there are people who have high GPAs, high test scores, and they don't get in. A lot, what I have found is that visiting the school before you go pays dividends. It does not hurt to have, I would say, a 3.25 to a 3.7 GPA because you need to, one needs to be competitive. Your test scores, I think, don't answer all the questions, but having a good writing sample, good letters of recommendation, and Knowing, just knowing the program is really what gets in, but I think you need to do the work on, on that. Like Martin brought up a good point about working with the foundation, having some projects on the side. As an undergrad, those projects and working with outside foundations really helps show your commitment to something, your commitment to a program, because graduate school does take a long time, especially pursuing a PhD. You're talking five to seven years. It's about who knows you and who can vouch for you. In a good program. In a good program. Who knows you and who can vouch for you? I mean, honestly, without Dr. Lott, Dr. Moore, Dr. Harrison, I wouldn't be here. I mean, my, 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 my grades were, you know, good. I had an okay GRE score, but the fact that those great men were able to, to buy for my entrance into this university is, speaks beyond grades and test scores and words. It's all about the relationships that you build. So, have you been going to office hours? Have you been getting to know your professors? Are there people who can vouch for you who know that you do quality work? It's not only about grades, it's about what else you can do. So, for example, on all my grad school applications, I talked about the different programs that I had started. I had started like um, different advising programs. I had started a little business where I started basketball camps and clinics. And all that stuff separates you from the competition. Everybody goes to school, you're at UT. Everybody's at a prestigious university. What somebody told me about graduate school was one of the biggest things that helped me on my application was, in my essays and stuff is you need to brag on yourself. And a lot of times we're not taught to do that. So it's like everything you've ever done, you want to bring it up and make it sound like you a boss. As we talked about, graduate school can be a grind. We're putting off you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or at least close to that, to get a degree. Is it, is it worth it? I mean, I think it's definitely worth it. I think based on, to all you undergraduates out there, I think based on everything you've heard up to this point, there's two themes or two traits that really stand out. And that's delayed gratification and calculated risk. Uh, <laughs> you asked me to add Devin the Wander Walker. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles, went to school at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Now I'm here earning my master's in cultural studies and education. I'm Martin Smith. Um, I'm from San Diego, California. I did my master's and my bachelor's degree at the University of California at Berkeley, where I also played basketball for four years. And now I'm a third year doctoral student at the University of Texas at Austin in cultural studies. My name is Langston Clark. I'm a fourth year PhD student in uh, physical education, teacher education. Got my undergraduate degree at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University and my master's degree from The Ohio State University. My name is DeLawrence Dean. I'm originally from Fort Collins, Colorado. I got my uh, undergraduate degree from Colorado State University and I did my master's at Michigan State University. Uh, right now I'm a first year doctoral student program in higher education leadership. I am Anthony Heaven. Um, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Right now I'm finishing up the master's program in higher education <laughs> administration and I'll be starting the doctoral program in the fall. How are you doing? My name is Neil Tanner. I'm from Arlington, Texas. Uh, I got my undergraduate a degree here at the University of Texas at Austin and I'm a first year master's student in the cultural studies and education program here at UT. Got the <laughs> My name is Alvin Logan. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that one time. Uh, I'm Alvin Logan. I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. I went to school at the University of Washington where I played football on a ran track. Also continued there to get my master's in education and now I'm a first year doctoral student in cultural studies and education with uh, Neil and uh, Brother Martin under Dr. Harrison here at the University of Texas. And Devin. So <laughs> my name is Cameron McCoy I'm from Washington, D.C. I received my bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University, my master's degree from Texas A&M University. I am a second year PhD student in the history department here at the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Moore, uh, Leonard Moore is my advisor uh, at BYU. Uh, Played, I played football and ran track there as well. And my name is John Williams. I am from Dallas, Texas, and I am 
Uh, got my bachelor's from this great university called the University of Texas at Austin. 